introductions. Now time for members' statements. Members' statements. The member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, by proclaiming the month of May as Jewish Heritage Month, the province of Ontario recognizes the important contributions that the Canadian Jewish community has made to Ontario's social, economic, political, and cultural fabric. While Jews share religion, they belong to all races of humanity and can be found in almost any country in which their freedom to practice their faith and celebrate their heritage is guaranteed. From India to Ethiopia and China to Morocco, an incredible variety of customs and languages demonstrate the complexities and fascinating history of the Jewish faith. Everyone is welcome to learn more about the Jewish community at several outdoor events. B'nai B'rith is hosting the first Jerusalem Day Carnival at York Hill Park in Thornhill on May 17th. The 20th annual Israel Day Festival will take place once again at the Lubavitch Jewish Community Campus just north of my riding of Thornhill. On June 7th, join the energetic members of Namat Canada for tons of entertainment, food, crafts, and lots of schmoozing. The Ashkenaz Festival, the largest Jewish cultural event in Canada, takes place every two years at Harbour Front and other locations throughout Toronto. The festival, which features over 200 artists and performers working in music, theatre, dance, film, literature, craft, and visual arts, attracts a diverse multicultural audience of over 60,000 people. Ashkenaz has made Toronto the epicentre in the revival of the klezmer and Yiddish scene. I look forward to seeing all of you at these events in all of our communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members, thank you. The member from Kitchener Waterloo. Thank you very much. Uh, one year ago, I rose to speak about 13 year old Jacob Beacock, who had passed away from an appendicitis related illness. He was a spirited kid, loved deeply by his family and friends, and Jacob was also a proud member of the minor band of Waterloo Ice Wall Wolves. And his memory was recently honoured by the members of the Waterloo Region community who organised the Beacock Cup, an NHL style hockey game for charity. I wanted to mention Jacob again today because April is Organ and Tissue Donation Awareness Month. Last year, Jacob's parents, Pam and Dam, decided that Jacob would become an organ donor, and at least four families have had their lives changed because of Jacob's gift. Currently, there are 1,500 people waiting for organ donations, so we encourage you today to become a donor. I also wanted to mention the importance of giving blood on May 22nd with the Canadian Blood Services. My office is organizing a blood drive at 10 a.m. at the clinic at Bridgeport Road. My friend Peter Thurley is a wonderfully giving and active member of the kitchener Waterloo community. He was recently diagnosed with cancer and underwent emergency surgery. Like countless other cancer patients, Peter needs blood transfusions. Peter is now on the long road to recovery, and we are all thinking of him and his wife, Shandy. We know that this is your toughest campaign yet, but we have faith you'll make it through this one, too. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Good member statement, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise today to recognize the 41st anniversary of the Carnation Revolution, or as known in Portuguese, Revolução dos Cravos, which was celebrated on April 25th. This revolution was a pivotal moment in the history of Portugal. On April 25th, the Portuguese community celebrates the peaceful disposition of the authoritarian party Estado Novo, who had ruled Portugal from 1933 until its fall in 1974. What started as a military coup organized by the Movimento das Forças soon became an unanticipated and unprecedented campaign of civil resistance. What came next was not only the fall of the Estado Novo, but also the withdrawal of Portugal from its African colonies in East Timor. The name Carnation Revolution comes from the fact that what was supposed to be an armed revolution transformed into a population that took to the streets to celebrate the end of a long and unforgiving dictatorship and wars in the colonies by placing carnations into the muscles of rifles and on the uniforms of the army. On April 23rd, I welcome to the Legislature Manuel Pedroso Marques, a colonel who took part in the Carnation Revolution, and also Carlos Murgadinho, a constituent of mine who runs the Cultural Association of the 25th of April. And on April 25th, I attended a gala dinner along with Minister Charles Souza, hosted by this Cultural Association, to commemorate all those that fought for this liberty.
Mr. Speaker, it is with great pride that I stand here today as a beneficiary of the courage and compassion of so many hundreds of thousands of Portuguese men and women that helped transform Portugal into what it is today. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I'd like to take this opportunity to speak about a disease which touches the lives of an estimated 1,000 Canadian men annually. Today, I'll be introducing a private member's bill entitled the Testicular Cancer Awareness Month Act to designate the month of April for testicular cancer awareness across the province. I am introducing this bill, Speaker, as one step in the fight to address the fact that not only is testicular cancer the most common form of cancer in men between the ages of 15 and 34, but the incidence of testicular cancer has increased steadily over the last several decades. And while more than 90 percent of men who receive treatment will ultimately be cured, the fact is if the disease is caught in the early stages, cure rates are even better, preventing the life-changing impacts that can follow diagnosis, sometimes sadly proving fatal. I chose to designate April as Testicular Cancer Awareness Month because it is important for cancer awareness in Canada. April is recognized as Daffodil Month, the national fundraising campaign of the Canadian Cancer Society. I hope that this designation will bring attention to this particular form of cancer. Speaker, by taking one small step to designate April and the creation of associated awareness campaigns, men in Ontario can better understand the impacts of this disease, and I think we can all support giving them a better chance to benefit from early detection and treatment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Essex. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. You know, I had the pleasure to honor, pleasure and honor to meet with our local agriculture producers in Essex County a couple of weeks ago. I just want to relay some of the information that I heard from them and acknowledge them and thank them for meeting with me. Brad Anger, Mark Bockwell, Leo Gilbo, Brian Hyland, Kevin Smith, Dan Barrett, Chris Snip, Henry Denotter, uh, Maurice Chauvet, Brendan Burney, and Gail Bogart. Uh, they talked about the ban on neonex. They are concerned uh, about the recommendations made to deal with the pollinator health and our agriculture producers, uh, that they've been singled out without a balanced approach being applied. They've talked about energy policy and access to reliable and affordable energy, concerns around privatization of Hydro One Speaker, and the increase uh, that those costs will incur on our primary agriculture producers in the province. Uh, they want to streamline access and streamline the regulatory regime for that. They want to see a plan for natural gas access uh, that is well uh, nuanced and, and, and well articulated through the province and not just simply a, a promise uh, well into the future. Infrastructure, Speaker, in Essex County, they want to see Highway 3 expanded. They want to see the promise fulfilled by this, pro by this government, something that will fulfill uh, the legacy of my predecessor, Bruce Crozier, drainage support, rural education, and health care, of course, uh, important in, uh, issues. Regulations, they want a fair and sensible approach to regulations that doesn't further put the farmers at a disadvantage to foreign uh, competitors and foreign importers. And the Great Lakes Water Protection Act, they want to see some clear uh, discussion around that. They would like to have their voices heard and concerns uh, listened to. We hope that the government understands that, uh, and I thank them for meeting with me in our riding. Thank you very thank much, you. Speaker. For the member statements, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. On Friday, I had the pleasure of touring and making a funding announcement at the Barrie Community Health Centre. While I was there, Executive Director Christine Colsey advised me that this year is the 25th anniversary of the Barrie Community Health Centre. Throughout these 25 years, the Barrie Community Health Centre has endeavoured to realize its vision of a healthy and engaged community. As one of Ontario's models of team-based primary health care, the Barrie Community Health Centre serves individuals across Across the lifespan. Clients are able to access a range of primary health care services, including appointments with physicians, nurse practitioners and nurses, receive a consultation with a diabetes educator, attend a physiotherapy or social work session, and also connect with a community health worker. In addition, clients of the BCHC may attend a variety of group activities hosted at the centre or throughout our community, including the Chronic Disease Self-Management Series, fitness for health and walking programs, as well as kitchen conversations, the art therapy program, Cafe Connect drop-in, drop and many more. 
While I was there and earlier on a home visit with Dr. Kirsten Mossman, I was so impressed with the dedication and commitment of the staff and the volunteers, and I would like to thank, you for the, thank them for the wonderful work that they do in our community of Barrie. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Chatham Kent Essex. Thank you, Speaker. This year marks the golden anniversary for the Egg Farmers of Ontario, and I want to personally congratulate the EFO for what they provide communities throughout Ontario and the world. EFO is really about hardworking egg and pullet farmers. They're to be commended for the dedication to the success of egg farmers. There have been 14 different chairs in EFO's 50-year history, with this year's chair being Scott Graham. These hardworking farming families produce close to 200 million dozen eggs annually. These egg producers are continuously raising the bar of egg production, keeping us all very healthy. <clears throat> this year's celebration is all about respecting the past, embracing the present, while building to the future. In December of 1972, the Canadian Egg Marketing Agency, SEMA, was established, and in 1977, they launched the first Get Kraken national advertising campaign, a catchy phrase that succeeded in uh, correcting the steady decline in Canadian egg consumption that occurred since the 1950s. Many changes have occurred over the years, including changing its name from the Ontario Egg Producers to the Egg Farmers of Ontario in 2006. Farm families continue to grow in Ontario, and in 2014, the Egg Donation Food Bank program was established, providing 12,000 dozen eggs per month to food banks throughout Ontario uh, Association of Food Banks. Every year, the Egg Farmers of Ontario hosts a delicious egg breakfast here at Queen's Park. It begs Yummy. the question, Speaker, who made your eggs today? <laughs> so run to your favorite grocery store and buy your favorite dozen or so eggs. Don't delay, you better. Crackin'. Get cracking. Get cracking. Thank you, Speaker. Crackin'. Crackin'. Member statements. The member from Etobicoke. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We did get crack in. Grant crack. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Earth Day. Earth Day is an annual celebration commemorated on April 22nd in which events are held worldwide to demonstrate support for environmental protection. And over the years, a number of communities have turned it into Earth Week, where they spend the whole week. Uh, uh, conducting all kinds of activities. In my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore, we look forward to uh, Earth Week each and every year with many community events planned to engage and educate residents on the importance of environmental consciousness. This year was no different, Mr. Speaker. S local schools, BIAs, residents groups, and many others organized and participated in various meetings, cleanups, and the greening of our community. I was fortunate to actively participate in several of these. I joined the children, staff, and parent echo team at St. Leo's Catholic Elementary School, my alma mater, for spring bulb planting in the school's front gardens. Seniors from the parish community also joined us in the planning as part of their intergenerational gardening uh, program. I was also pleased to assist the Friends of Queensland Park during their annual cleanup day, which was another big success. And Mr. Speaker, Etobicoke Lakeshore is a waterfront community, and my residents are great stewards of Lake Ontario. And each and every year, resident Alan Roy conducts an annual cleanup for Sam Smith Park, which I attended together with TRCA, Concerned Citizens for the Future of Etobicoke Waterfront and Friends of Sam Smith Park. So in Etobicoke Lakeshore, we take great pride in this. We try to make each and every day an Earth Day, and that includes, Mr. Speaker, making every effort every day to reduce carbon emissions. Thank, Thank you. you. Under statements, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. This past Saturday, I was thrilled to attend the Earth Day activities at Air Public School in North Dumfries Township. People from around my riding of Cambridge came together to celebrate Earth Day and to work to make our community a better place to live. The activities began with a barbecue and vendors market in the school gym. Local crafters had set up stands to sell green products. There were also stations for e-waste disposal and areas to donate used clothes for the less fortunate. At the Earth Day event, I was happy to learn about and help with the Air Public School Greening Committee. The Greening Committee is working to improve the outdoor area for students to learn and to play. Part of the Greening Committee's strategy includes building a sensory garden, which will include a variety of plants as well as a place for children to spend time reading out of doors. 
Students from Southwood Secondary School, including my son Liam and his friends, volunteered their time all day to help clear out the area that will become the Air Public School Reading Garden, and they enlisted my help when I dropped by the activities. Earth Day is a reminder to care for and to respect our world. I would like to thank the heads of the Greening Committee, Stephanie Mason and Erica Gordon, as well as teacher Jacqueline Deacon from Southwood Secondary School and principal of Air Public School, Helen Turner Fisher, for their ongoing dedication to greening and improving our community. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.